Good morning, CrossFit Lynchpin. It is September 16th, a Monday? I believe it's a Monday? That's pretty bad. I think it's a Monday. And I'll preface this with what I always say. The intention is a quick, short video, but we'll see. As always, I'm awful about checking questions. As always, I will say, if you have some questions, throw them out there. I can't promise that I'll get to them. I can't promise that I'll remember. But I will make some sort of an effort on what level that effort is. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, the topic for today is every now and then, this doesn't, maybe it falls into the category of pet peeves. So I should, I should just say that in general. The airing of grievances. Um, if... You know, most things say, you know, it's an AMRAP for a workout. Most things say for time or something like that. Every now and then, I'll see somebody post something and it will say for quality, not for time, for quality, which is great for sure. And it's great if that's being used um, in a non-pretentious way right? Because if you post something and it says for quality, like there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it, right? So if you post something for quality every now and then, my immediate feeling is, well, what the heck are you doing on the other days? Does that imply that the other days are not for quality? That, that, that strikes me as a bit of a mild issue there. And getting back to just fundamental CrossFit methodology 101, is that as coaches and athletes, we are greedy. We want everything. We want all 10 general physical skills, right? But we're not only greedy there, we're greedy in that I would want an athlete to move quickly and to move well, both. And I'm really not willing to sacrifice moving well for the sake of moving quickly. I think that's a very poor bargain right there. So we can have both, it's possible to have both. The loading and the speed at which you can have both will vary per athlete ability level, per athlete experience level, per athlete competency level. And then a more talented coach will probably be able to ride that line better with a greater segment of the population than a less experienced coach, but that's just experience, right? You can't buy experience, and that less experienced coach will get better as time goes by of, of keeping his people moving both quickly and well at the same time. And and the two are, I hope no one sacrifices, so again, I hope nobody sacrifices moving well for the sake of speed. The heck with the whiteboard. We all know that intensity, independent variable, maximizing rate of return, favorable adaptation, you know, we have we all know the intensity leads to the good stuff. And that intensity means doing a set amount of work quicker or doing more work in the same period of time. But even though all that is true, those goals should not be pursued by sacrificing the quality of your movement. So we want to pursue those goals as quickly as we reasonably and safely and efficiently can while moving well. So, in my humble opinion, any time that I write a workout and it says, you know, 21.59 reps for time of, if you understand CrossFit, and if you understand what we're doing and why we're doing it, in the words for time, it should also resonate in your head that it's also for quality and always is because we want you to move quickly, but we want you to move well. And if you had to say, well, which one is more important, I would say that I want both at the same time. Then if you produced a revolver and you threatened me with my life and you said you have to pick one, I would say I want you to move well. And we can slow you down a little bit. We can lower the weight a little bit to make sure that you're moving well. And then once you display continued competency and proficiency there, we'll increase the pace a little bit or we'll increase the loading a little bit or we'll do both and we'll have this nice little symphony back and forth and the two can coexist. And at the end of the day, pursuing one without the other, you know, speed or moving well, it's short-sighted because 
past a certain point for the overwhelming majority of the population, if you want to move quicker, that means most likely that you're not only a competent and capable athlete, but that you're an efficient athlete. And I mean efficient with your mechanics, efficient with your technique. So that means you are moving well. So if you want to get more weight, you know, when you're first learning the clean, yeah, you can go from an empty bar to a certain number of, a certain amount of weight by with ugly technique and just yanking on the bar harder. That's true. But you'll only be able to yank in an ugly fashion a certain amount of weight off the ground. And then you will plateau. And then you'll have to lower the weight. And the only way that you will produce more intensity or do more work or get more weight on the bar is by moving well through mechanics and through technique. And it's the same thing with Fran or even a metabolic conditioning workout or Helen or something like that. You may be able to do some spastic 400 meter runs and get a certain amount of time. So you could maybe say, you know, that athlete's not moving well. And then no matter how much they just try to spaz out on the runs, they could apply that same amount of energy that they're exerting into more efficient running technique and lower the time on the clock. So once again, you're not going to maximally express your power. You're not going to maximally express your ability to, to get the best time possible if you're moving poorly. It's just a, it's an undefendable position, quite frankly. And I mean, be it with Fran, you know, efficient technique of a kipping pull-up, inefficient, inefficient technique of a kipping pull-up. They're just unnecessary wasted energy. Are you dancing the barbell on Fran all around the room because you don't have beautiful air squat mechanics or front squat mechanics or are your feet firmly planted on the floor? Your upper torso is nice and vertical. Knees are out. You're getting a beautiful leg drive and a core to extremity sequence that finishes with the barbell overhead. I mean, that's going to be tough to beat. And that's going to be your, your best way to get the fastest time on the board. So again, any workout that is for time should also be for quality. The two are, the two are best friends. They're neighbors. They need each other. And then even geeking out a bit more, you know, if you look at the 10 general physical skills uh, for CrossFit, and if you look at strength, so there's a classic definition of strength that you may find in, in like classic strength and conditioning journals, exercise physiology or something like that, you know, re regarding or defining strength as just the contractile potential of your muscles. And anyone who's attended to level one, this is, I'm just regurgitating. I did not create this information. I'm just saying it again. But CrossFit's definition of strength wasn't so much contractile potential of your muscles, but it was the productive application of force. And the next sentence on that is if strength is defined as the productive application of force, the productive application of force is technique dependent. So meaning you will never maximally express that strength or accomplish work without proper technique. It's just, it is the way. So that's it. Hopefully everybody understands we can have both. We're greedy. You can move at a nice pace and you can move well. And that is always the goal. Every single solitary day, that is the goal. I can't imagine a coach going in and saying, all right, today's workout is the heck with how you move. All that matters is that, that time on the board. So just sacrifice form, rip that bar off the ground, round your back, who cares, get it done. And that's, you know, unabashed idiocy. So anytime it says for time, it also says for quality. It's just, it's just part of it. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. And let me see if I'm, if I missed anything, because as I said, I will try to look through. Let's see here. Um, Oh, appears to be good so far. A bunch of hellos. Hello and waves to everybody. Waving right back at you. I think we're going to be good. Yeah, grip it and rip it. Exactly. Now, I'm... Hopefully this little rant, if you could call it that, that I just went on, is taken appropriately. Taken taken well. Taken, you know, as a an education piece because I'm not going to stand here and say that I haven't been guilty of such things. When I first 
just clicked on CrossFit.com many, many moons ago in, in 2005 and hadn't attended a level one, hadn't read a single thing in the journal, didn't know anything at all about functional movements or training with intensity or, you know, movements that were actually complicated and required me to engage my brain and the neurological components. Uh, I was in the mindset of just get it done and I would get it done no matter what that meant. And that was a very poor decision. And I'm very lucky that all it was is a poor decision that allows me to tell the story and I didn't do something dumb to my body. So hopefully everybody just learns from uh, my idiocy. Let's see. Cameron Randall. I did a workout yesterday. Wasn't feeling great, so I told myself to move slower, but try to move perfect. I move well, but not perfect. Could that be an example of quality, not time? It could be, Cameron, but that should be... I guess my point is that should be what happens in every human being every time. First of all, I've seen a lot of people move. I've very rarely seen perfect movement, so it's nice to try for it, but nobody's ever going to move perfect, right? So you're trying to move as best as you can, safely and efficiently, and trying to learn techniques and cues to improve that movement. But if you're ever in a workout, any workout, and what you expressed yesterday, Cameron, like that should be what everyone does on every workout. So for example, if you're in a workout and you're whatever, you're doing power cleans, you're doing handstand push-ups, you're doing kettlebell swings, like the movement doesn't matter, and your breathing's elevated, maybe you just took off a bit too aggressive on the pace and all of a sudden you feel like, ooh, I can, I can feel myself, the fatigue setting in, the fatigue is causing me to move in a way that I know is not that great, um, and I've got two choices. Since I'm fatigued, I can keep moving at this in this method or manner that I'm really not that proud of, or I can stop, put the bar down, put the kettlebell down, hop off the pull-up bar, and breathe for 10, 20, 30, 40 seconds, whatever you need to get your faculties back a little bit, and then go back and grab that barbell, or grab that pull-up bar, or grab that kettlebell, and continue on with the workout in a manner of moving and a quality of movement that you would be much more happy and proud of and you're still I guarantee working out at plenty of intensity so that's the wonderful thing like if you just, if you're ever just not happy with how you're moving stop just stop moving take a small rest gather yourself and then go ahead and hit it again and life will be wonderful and that will be a a much more sustainable way to do functional movements at high intensity that you will be able to do for decades instead of only being concerned about your time, only being concerned about the whiteboard, the heck with how I'm moving, the heck with my knees, my back, my shoulders, or whatever. You know, intensity reigns supreme even over quality, not really the case. So everybody can make that, that call. Let's see. In two months of getting back, this is Ethan. In two months of getting back into Lynchpin, I've dropped my 400 meter times from 2 minutes or 2.10 to 134 to 145 last week. This stuff works. Thank you very... Hey, didn't know you were going to post that. It was a spontaneous post. Thank you. That makes me a... I'm a human, so that obviously makes me feel good and fills me with pride. So, very cool. And it's... Uh, it's just my goal to try to help everybody move in the right direction based upon good stuff that I've learned and then dumb stuff that I've done. I'm going to try to get rid of the dumb stuff, polish up the good stuff, and just push the good stuff out there so that hopefully everybody avoids the mistakes that I did and just accelerates their own long-term health and fitness. That's the, that's the deal. Uh, let's see. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Have a great day, everybody. If you're doing today's workout, some running and some power snatches, kind of a heavy day at a high heart rate. Ben, I see you there from France. Just a French lunatic animal of fitness that just destroys workouts on a regular basis. So Ben, have it heavy in the community there. All right, that's it. I said it would try to be brief, so I'll take this. I'll post it on our YouTube channel. It's just CF Lynchpin. So enjoy, and I will talk to everybody later.